well, cognizant of everybody's time, uh, not only us on camera, but uh, to the public who is watching as well, we'll, we'll commence uh, our meeting and, uh, and then Mayor Ralph and uh, Councillor Finstad can join us uh, as is. There's five of seven board members here today. So uh, at uh, 13.02 hours, I'll call the uh, meeting of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission June meeting uh, to order. And uh, just a reminder to everybody that uh, we're now recording this meeting is being live stream on YouTube for the public. So I'll read this screen off here. Uh, location of our recordings due to the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic, board members are each in their respective homes and places of work for the duration of this recording. And we welcome all of those who are guests and viewers and thank everyone who may be joining us online today uh, or may in fact watch it later. I want to start our meeting on behalf of the board. We would like to acknowledge the traditional land which we are virtually gathered is Treaty 6. We would like to thank the diverse Indigenous peoples whose ancestors' footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as the Cree, Dene, Soto, Nakota Sioux, and Blackfoot peoples. We also acknowledge this as the Métis homeland and the home of the largest concentration of Inuit south of the 60th parallel. It is a welcoming place for all peoples who come from around the world to share the Edmonton metropolitan region as a home. I think it's particularly pertinent that we start our meetings off with this acknowledgement, just given the uh, the sort of national turmoil that our uh, that our nation is going through in light of recent findings uh, in and around Kamloops. And uh, yeah, it is a journey that uh, we as a country need to uh, persevere on and not, uh, not be shy about taking the trip down the, the lane of reconciliation, irrespective of how hard it may be. But we're here to talk about uh, the Edmonton Metro Region and public transit and how we as a uh, organization will, will meet the needs of our region in a new and more innovative way. And I have to tell you, um, I was talking with Paul this morning and from a personal perspective, it's a, uh, it's a very encouraging meeting because now we are starting to move from the theoretical and the initial startup of a of an organization to actually starting to put in place those things that are necessary to uh, realize the vision that we are all part of. And that's the regional provision of actual service on the road. And so uh, we have an agenda before us, uh, take a look at it. I know you all received that and are aware of the agenda, but we do need a motion uh, to approve the agenda and uh, so if I could have someone, uh, Mayor Ralph, I see your raised hand. Would you like to move the agenda? Sure, I'll move the agenda as presented. All right, seeing that, uh, we can use the raise hand feature on, on Zoom to record our votes, all in favor? And I see that as uh, unanimous for those who are here and welcome Councillor Finstad as well. So all aboard is now a member and that's uh, are here. The agenda is approved. Now we have the, the second motion that's before us is the uh, approval of the May 20th uh, meeting. Um, can I have someone, uh, Councillor Walters, would you care to move this motion? I would, uh, hold on one second. I will move that the May 20th, 2021 regular board meeting minutes be approved as presented. Thank you very much. I'll call the question. All in favor, please raise the hand. And that is unanimous. Uh, thank you. Moving along now into the uh, CEO update and our CEO, Mr. Paul Jankowski, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I have got a few items that I wanted to just bring the board's attention to and provide a bit of an update on some of the activities that have taken place over the course of the last month or so. 
Um, I'm, <laughs> I say exactly a month for me. Uh, today marks exactly one month since my uh, my day of starting. So uh, the last month been, has been extremely busy for me personally, as well as for a number of the service providers that are represented here today and in attendance today. Uh, I'm just going to run through the, the the five items, starting with uh, an update on kind of uh, some of the activities that I've been involved with personally in terms of getting to know some of the key players around the uh, the region. Over the course of the last month, I've had the pleasure of meeting with uh, uh, all of the heads of councils of the eight participating uh, municipalities forming the, this commission. Uh, I've also met with all of the senior leaders of the administration, the CAOs, city managers, Managers and so on, as well as uh, I've met with a number of the leads of the transit uh, operations areas and transit planning areas in all of the municipalities. Uh, I met with those folks as uh, most of them attended the meetings with the heads of council, uh, as well as with the, uh, the senior leaders. Uh, but I've also had an opportunity now to meet a number of times with uh, the municipal liaison group uh, municipal liaison network that is, was had, was established during the, uh, the last two years under the direction of this board, and that has contributed immensely to the original development of the business case and uh, to where we are today. Um, I've also had the opportunity to discuss with those folks the uh, some of the the work going forward, and I will touch on that as we as we go through the next few slides. Um, I've also had the opportunity to meet with the, uh, the CEOs of the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board and Edmonton Global, and uh, I've been very, uh, very pleased with uh, the discussions that have taken place with them. It's obvious that this commission is going to work very closely with those, those uh, boards, with those organizations. Uh, it, they, the, under the direction of the board, the service providers have established many of those relationships over the course of the last two years. And uh, certainly the, uh, the reception has been nothing but warm from both of the heads of those organizations. Uh, and I look forward to working with them more closely as we, as we go through the uh, next few months and, and year of setting up this particular organization. In particular, the discussions with the uh, Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board as, it, as they relate to the uh, overall regional transportation master plan uh, there was mention in that re regional transportation master plan that was brought forward to the board last Thursday of the importance and the significance that this commission plays in bringing forward and enacting a uh, truly regional transit uh, approach. And uh, it was great to see that recognized in the transportation master plan and uh, um, the, with the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board having played an instrumental role in setting up this particular organization, I'm sure that there is gonna be lots of opportunity for collaboration and working together over the, the uh, coming years. Um, the other uh, sort of organization that I'll highlight is I've also spent some time with the outgoing head of the Edmonton Board of Trade. I haven't yet had an opportunity to meet with the, uh, the new CEO there, the new executive director, uh, but uh, I, given that we are co-sharing uh, our office spaces, I, uh, I have no doubt that I'll be meeting with him uh, in the near, very near future. Uh, moving on to the next slide, maybe I'll stop there. I, I don't know if there are any questions from the board with regards to the outreach activities that uh, I've been involved with. Councillor Walter. Walter. Sorry, my uh, menu keeps vanishing on my computer to switch. Uh, so just in terms of the regional transportation master plan, plan work, uh, would you, how would you characterize the, sorry, how would you characterize the level of inclusion of the transit network as a part of that master plan? Like well, very high, moderately high, low? <laughs> well, I, I was pleased to see that it was mentioned in the plan. Um, I, I think they're, you know, in the future, I think we'll be working with the Metropolitan Region Board to uh, strengthen the uh, integration, strengthen the interconnectivity and reliance on transit. 
Uh, I think it was recognized in the master plan that transit, particularly regional transit, is going to play a key role in terms of the economic development and in terms of getting people to and from the the significant employment areas across the region, uh, the, the areas of uh, um, the post-secondary education. Uh, I, I think, quite frankly, that the, uh, the, the mention that was in there, I think in the future, we'll work hard to strengthen the, the ties between the long-range planning for the organization, from the, the long-range planning around transit. Uh, there seemed to also be in that transportation master plan a lot of reliance on the, uh, the, the other elements of the integrated transportation network on the, the highway network, the road network, and so on. Uh, I think over the coming years, we'll, we'll continue to work to strengthen the, uh, the, the tie-ins to regional transit as we go forward. Yeah, you know, I, I wonder, and this is just a comment generally, if, if I may, Mr. Chair, you know, it's, although, you know, many of us and certainly our municipalities are uh, the task force members of that working group <laughs> with, on, on different days with different hats on, uh, I think it, you know, behooves us as a board in, in advocating for regional transit, as, as we all do, uh, to remind uh, the MRB that uh, transit does play a significant role in the growth plan, which is the matriarch of all regional plans, and, and therefore, uh, you know, greater emphasis uh, on transit is, is important. And I would, I would even uh, be inclined to consider uh, whether it be today or, or, or at a later date, a motion that we, you know, just write a letter uh, from this group to uh, that task force and the board to, you know, say that this is an important, you know, we've done all this work uh, in this region and, and we've done it largely in compliance with the growth plan spirit and in, in direction from the Metro Mayors Alliance original report, which again was crafted uh, under the guide, guide and guidance and leadership of our municipalities. So we just need to advocate for consistency and, and, and make sure that our voice is heard. Fair comment, thank you. Mayor Ralph. I uh, actually, uh, Councillor Laurie had his hand up before okay. me. Councillor Laurie, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, not to stick their own order, but I appreciate it. Uh, I just actually wanted to add to Councillor Walter's comment there. Um, I actually was one of the sitting members of the IRTMP and uh, was fortunate to be able to, to be privy to a lot of the information there. And um, just a little bit of the context of it, I fully support what Councillor Walters has said. And I definitely do think that uh, the EMTSC does need to begin engaging with the EMRB and uh, making sure that, you know, our, our, future plans are well understood and how they integrate in. Um, part of the transportation or the, the transit aspect in the IRTMP was actually left intentionally somewhat vague because the IRTMP wanted to be respectful and not limiting to the EMTSC's future planning and wanted to ensure that it was left to understand that the EMTSC is the subject matter expert in the transit realm and wanted to give the EMTSC the freedom to bring forward the plans that they would feel best would suit the region for the Metropolitan Regional Growth Plan. So uh, I, I believe it was well recognized, the role of the EMTSC in that future plan in the uh, IRTMP. Uh, I do think they are well aware of the EMTSC and, and what we are looking to achieve and how we've been moving forward and are obviously uh, waiting for us to put our plans in place so that they can integrate them into the, the EMRB plans as well. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, now over to you, Mayor Ralph. Um, well, for the, at the last EMRB meeting, I actually brought up my concerns in regards to the, the lack there of it, in my opinion, of uh, information that was actually done through the task force through the, for, for the planning of this. So, um, and I understand that, you know, the, uh, there was a lot of work done by the IR, IRTMP, but there was also a lot of stuff that uh, this, the task force had uh, put down and, and documented as far as routes and everything, future routes and everything that were left out of that plan. And my concern uh, from there, and I said it uh, to the EMRB at that time, was 
because of the fact that other higher levels of government are going to look at this plan, the IRTMP, and make decisions based on that. And there was big misses, in my opinion, in that plan. So, you know, it, it's if it's something like that is going to be in the future, like the we need to make sure that there's coordination between different groups so that when a document, something like that does go out, there isn't a disconnect. Because uh, as I say, like we're looking for future funding and everything else. There was trip, there was, uh, you know, planned routes or future routes planned in there that weren't included. Um, so that I believe that the, you know, there was a disconnect. So, and, and again, that is a concern that I have and I did bring it up to the MRB. Um, you know, on the other hand, as I say, there was a lot of good work done in there. But I think, as I say, when we have a, uh, you know, we have a plan like that, that the senior levels of government are going to look at and make decisions based on that, we need to make sure that we're in it. So, yeah, that's my my comments. Thanks. Fair enough. Uh, great commentary. Uh, Paul, uh, if you take that away and, and if uh, Councillor Walters, if you are, are going to make a motion either today or next uh, meeting, uh, uh, we can certainly entertain uh, writing a letter on behalf of the commission here to the uh, to the MRB in relation to that. So, Councillor Walters, your thought? Yeah. So I'm not sure of the timing of the, you know, or or that any letter would affect the timing of the approval of that plan. I I can't. Maybe there's someone from administration who could chime in on the when the board is gonna or maybe. Councillor Laurie knows when the board is going to deal with that. Um, or maybe they already have. I, I missed the last couple EMRB board meetings, but uh, I think, you know, either way, it wouldn't be, it would be fine for us just to, you know, certainly as a primary stakeholder in that work, uh, who those of us, you know, again, you know, this is the stuff that the public laughs at when we're basically writing letters to ourselves. But, but, but nonetheless, I think to, sort of make the point that you know we're there and we expect that transit be a, a significant a part of uh of uh you know i under, i do understand that that i'm the regional master plan has been approved um but just just a letter that it goes on the record from, from our organization which is independent uh would be useful so i can make a motion to that effect if um you know that the chair on behalf of the uh, Edmonton Metro Transit Service Commission write a letter advocating for the you know significant integration of transit in future IMTMRP uh, work. <clears throat> okay, fair enough, Haley. If you could capture that for later uh, at the end of this discussion, that'd be great. Uh, Councillor Lori, then Councillor Finstead. Yeah, thank you. I just want to advise the, the dates. So yes, the IRTMP task force meets again on July 23rd, uh, which is the day after our next EMTSC board meeting. So I would suggest that that motion would be appropriate today to ensure that there's enough time to get the information into the hands of the EMRB and the IRTMP working team uh, so that it can be addressed at that meeting on the 23rd. Thank you, Councillor Laurie. Councillor Finstead? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The only comment I was going to make was the sooner the better. And, uh, and as uh, Councillor Lori explained, it uh, the need to do it sooner than later is now more evident than it was before. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right. So, uh, Councillor Walters, you you spoke a a motion into existence. Uh, um, just Haley, did you capture that uh, in written form so that we can review it? Uh, not quite yet, <laughs> uh, drafting that, right. um, but I I can definitely craft something. We can, uh, if it's okay, we can come back to it. Um, that would be awesome. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll maybe make that motion for. We've got three other motions to deal with at the end of the meeting. We'll. Make that motion for uh, number four, if that's okay with you, Councillor Walters. Right, and and I just to add for Haley's benefit, the you know to work in the transit be you know a big priority. I think the plan is one thing, and then the subsequent prioritization um, and communication to the provincial government uh, is also important. So I think prioritization of transit is just the key phrase to be 
put into that motion, Haley. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Okay. Mr. CAO, back to you. All right, thank you. Um, so moving on then, the other thing, the next uh, item that I wanted to kind of update the board on was the uh, situation around all the work that we're doing on the financial side and setting up the organization. Uh, as I'm sure members of the board will remember, uh, the, uh, the original plan that was uh, approved by the board was to seek guarantees from the city of Edmonton and the city of St. Albert uh, for the, uh, the, the backing of the $5 million loan uh, mechanism that has been uh, applied for and negotiated with uh, successfully with, for, with the uh, uh, TD Bank. Uh, as uh, members of the board are aware, we did run into uh, some, some uh, issues with uh, getting the uh, original security that we were hoping to get from the city of St. Albert, but uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, through uh, a lot of uh, hard work on the part of particularly Deb Johnson and Alan Tom, uh, we did uh, negotiate with the, uh, the city of St. Albert an alternate agreement, which was ratified. Uh, thank you to, to Mr. Chair, to Chair Broadhead. Um, thank you for your support in uh, getting the, uh, the alternate arrangement through the city of St. Albert. Uh, the city of St. Albert approved an advance of the levies to be uh, forwarded to the commission, thus allowing us now to uh, start paying off our creditors and uh, allowing the, uh, the, the money to be paid to a number of the service providers that continue to contribute to the ongoing work and ongoing advancement of the commission's work. Uh, so we now have the $1.7 million in the bank. A number of the uh, payments have been approved and uh, we have also uh, successfully set up that payment process with the TD Bank. Um, so that, that's an update on the financial situation. Uh, just in terms of the guarantees that we were originally seeking from the cities of St. Albert and Edmonton, both of those uh, guarantee processes require public hearings uh, and uh, the first readings at both municipalities have been held. We do anticipate that we will be uh, successful in getting the guarantees from the two municipalities uh, early in uh, in July. And uh, at that point, the agreement with St. Albert is that we will be repaying the advance on the levies that were provided uh, at the beginning of June. Happy to answer any questions on the financial side. Oh, it went, it went through uh, without even a hiccup at, uh, at our council there, uh, Mr. Jankowski. So well done in putting uh, the, the terms of that together that uh, it was easily understood what was being uh, asked. So I, well. I should mention that Bill Shore has also played an integral part in, in terms of crafting the agreements uh, with the city of St. Albert. So thank you, Bill. Fair enough. Okay, so moving on then, on the human resources front, uh, I'm uh, I'm happy to say that we have uh, we have managed to put in place the benefit program arrangements, and uh, uh, Karen and Brittany have worked extremely diligently in terms of getting those arrangements in place to make sure that we are able to have competitive compensation programs in place to uh, start to, to recruit successfully for some of the key positions that uh, this commission is going to need to move through the remainder of, of this year and into the future. So the LAP uh, program we signed up for, we've also got a uh, benefits program in place now uh, to deal with the uh, things like uh, um, short-term disability, long-term disability, uh, medical uh, benefits and so on. Um, and uh, we're now moving forward on starting to recruit some of the key positions. Uh, I, this slide says that an offer has been extended for the CEO's EA position. And I'm happy to report that as of this morning, uh, Karen has successfully uh, executed an agreement with a, uh, a new um, EA that is going to be joining the organization uh, in 
July. I can't identify the, the person just yet, uh, but I'm happy to say that uh, this person is highly qualified uh, and uh, is very excited to be joining this, this commission in July. Uh, the, the notice to the current employer has not yet been provided, so uh, I, I won't release, I, I, I won't uh, infringe on the, uh, the confidentiality and, and the privacy of that person just yet, but I'm really happy that we will have a, a person in place to support not just me, but also the activities of this board. Uh, a lot of that person's work will be uh, to, to start to take over some of the responsibilities of preparing and running meetings like this, for example. So uh, good news on that front. Um, similarly, we have gone through the, the uh, advertising and we've closed the, uh, the applications for the Director of Stakeholder Relations. And uh, I, along with Karen, are busy uh, interviewing some really quality candidates that have submitted uh, to that uh, with, with interest in, in participating in that position. Um, we are also working on the job descriptions for a number of other key positions that we want to get in place by uh, sort of the third quarter of this year. Uh, and the most uh, imminent one of those will be the person that will be responsible for the commission's finances. So uh, while Deborah is doing great work in terms of uh, uh, keeping us, uh, get, getting us going, uh, I, we do need to recruit a, a high quality financial person and uh, we will be getting that process underway imminently. That wraps it up for human resources and happy to answer any questions on that. Looks good. All right. Moving forward then to the communications update. Uh, this board will remember that uh, uh, there was some information that we shared with the board uh, at the last meeting of the board. Uh, we are now moving forward and Berlin is moving forward with the uh, the uh, initiation of the brand positioning and messaging uh, work that uh, the board has authorized. Uh, over the course of this week and into next week, we will start to uh, be a little more visible in the community in terms of uh, starting to go out and recruit online focus groups. Uh, later on this summer, there will also be an over 1,200-person uh, survey that will be carried out within the Edmonton Metropolitan Region. And this is all, as the board might remember, all focused on uh, identifying some of the key attributes that our residents, that our, our travelers uh, will be identifying as, as values for this particular organization. Uh, that work will contribute to whatever uh, branding we, we will be bringing forward for the board's consideration later this year. Uh, but I wanted to bring this to the board's attention. We are developing a little bit of a communication um, uh, flyer, if I can call it that, or briefing note, which we will be distributing to each of you within the next few days. Uh, as uh, you may be getting questions from within your municipalities, from some of your constituents about uh, what, what is this phone call that I received asking about uh, my, my desire to participate in a focus group or my desire to participate in a survey on transit. Uh, so we will be making that, uh, that information available to all of you. Uh, with your blessing, we'll also be making that information available to all the communications uh, uh, folks within the municipalities, uh, just in case there are questions that are received at the municipal level. Um, we will be making clear that this work is being carried out on behalf of this commission and focused on the, uh, the development work of the regional transit uh, initiative as we go forward. We are, as, as per the discussions that we held at the last uh, board meeting, we are looking at uh, completing this initial uh, brand related engagement by late summer. And I'm happy to answer any questions on that front. Okay. So moving on to what I think is. 
moving on to what is, I think, the kind of the most significant amount of work that uh, we've been busy sort of shaping and, and we're now moving forward with. Uh, as I've had uh, discussions with uh, a number of members, of, well, all the members of the board individually, and as I've mentioned at uh, some of our earlier uh, group touch points, uh, I mentioned this at the board meeting the last, uh, last month, um, I truly believe that uh, the time is now right for us to take a, a, a look at the uh, proposed September 22 service plan. Um, back when the original business case was, uh, was uh, put together, back when the original service plan was uh, uh, approved by this, this board and was used, well, by the predecessor to this board and was used to really secure the buy-ins of the municipalities that are the, the eight members of the commission. Um, most of that work or all of that work was carried out prior to the current uh, uh, pandemic, prior to the significant impacts that uh, we have experienced across not just the Edmonton metropolitan region, but across all of North America with respect to transit ridership and uh, demand for transit. Um, recognizing that uh, some of the changes that we've experienced may be uh, longer term changes or it may take longer to actually recover from some of the significant uh, decreases in transit ridership. Uh, it's time for us to now to take a look at what it is that uh, that the eight municipalities have have been putting in place in terms of transit service levels. What is it that we're operating today? How does that reflect or how, when we apply that lens on what was planned back in 2019 and 2020? How does that uh, look as we start thinking about start of operations under the EMTSC banner in September of 2022? I said I would come back to the discussions that I've been having with the uh, the municipal transit people across the uh, eight municipalities, and this is the the point at which I will uh, kind of come back to that. Uh, the discussions that I've had with the municipal transit liaison group, uh, that the group that has been involved in terms of uh, shaping our approach in the past, um, we've had a, a clear. A discussion with that group to identify that over the course of the next three months, we really have to take we, we have to develop a common understanding of the service levels that are in place today uh, and what the 2019 plan might look like as modified by current conditions. Uh, so it, it, to, towards that uh, effort, we have developed a timeline and uh, Alan uh, and EY have worked with uh, Andrew Anderson, uh, and I'll come back to those two names in the next little while, but we've worked to develop a, a timeline for work uh, for the next three months in order for us to be able to bring back to this board a draft of the proposed service plan for the third and fourth quarter of 2022. We wanna bring it back in September of this year because it's really gonna form the basis for the budget that the board has requested to be presented to the board uh, in October of this year. So working backwards in order to get that, that October uh, submission of a draft budget, we really need to have the transit service plan uh, brought forward to the board in September. We need to, to hear, we need to, to discuss with the board what that transit service plan could look like and gain your input uh, so that we can finalize it and build the financial framework around it to support the draft budget and multi-year budget outlook that we want to bring forward in October of this year. Um, we have, uh, I've, I've talked about this with the board in the past, and uh, maybe at this point we can flip to the next slide, which really shows that proposed timeline. And I apologize a little bit for the, the size of this, but what it really depicts, uh, and Alan is here to speak to this as well, what it really depicts is that in June and July, we have to work with the eight municipalities to identify the, uh, the interim state from a transit service planning perspective uh, by looking at what was planned in 2019 and what, it, what is being delivered today 
and really looking at what do we think are reasonable expectations in terms of recovery of transit ridership and growth of transit demand between now and September of 2022. I want to make sure that we have complete consultations with all eight municipalities in that regard. I think it's imperative that that we try to achieve as, as much of a common understanding or a consensus on that as is possible. I, I have no doubts that there are going to be some that are going to question whatever it is that we come up with at the end, uh, because there is going to be a variety of opinions on the rate of recovery as we move forward. Uh, but that is the work that, uh, that we want to move forward with over the course of the next couple of months and into August and then really start looking at designing that service plan and ultimately preparing the financial uh, model for the 2022, three and four budget based on that service plan. So if I take you to the square dark blue blocks that are shown in starting in September, those are kind of the key milestones that we're going to shoot for. Uh, what we're looking to do is to bring a draft of that transit service plan to the board in early September. And as much as I hate to impose on the board, we may be asking for two meetings in September uh, in order to uh, seek your input initially and then to bring back a final uh, transit service plan along with that draft financial outlook that will be based on that, uh, that service plan. And all of that is, is to uh, bring forward to the board in September so that uh, we can get your, your reactions, we can get your input and finalize a draft budget submission uh, as the top dark blue box indicates in October of this year. And this I'm sure will generate some questions, so this might be an appropriate place to, uh, to stop. Board members, any, any questions of this? Well, personally, uh, just from my perspective, uh, Mr. Jankowski, uh, the whole concept of bringing into our budget process and the work of the commission, the, the impact of the, of the pandemic, I, it, it's such, it, it, it's this big thing that cannot be ignored. And so I appreciate the work that you're uh, doing here because we can't be uh, nose blind, if you will, to the impact of the pandemic on, on public jams in general. I also uh, truly appreciate this idea of, you know, what is the recovery going to look like? And uh, given that relationships within our commission are so important, I also appreciated your comment around finding some consensus around what is uh, held to be uh, the best path forward in, in understanding what that recovery would be in, in uh, the public transit realm. But uh, um, I see three hands up here and uh, I, I'll just pick the names that I see first. Uh, I hope I, I got the, the numbers right. I see Gord, then Sam, then Glenn, if that's okay. Gord, over to you. Sam had his hand up first, then me and then Glenn. So Sam's first. Okay, all right, Stan corrected again. Over to you, Sam. Well, thanks, Gordon. And, and yeah, I think, Chair, just for the future, if, if you miss me, uh, no problem. We can just go whatever order works for you. Um, so, a couple of comments and then a question. So, first, um, yeah, absolutely uh, agree that this needs to happen. Uh, and thanks, Paul, for, for bringing it to the forefront here. I think making sure that we uh, we take a look at that, uh, that, that service plan and how that financial model is going to. Um, how that's going to look based on everything that, that has happened over the last 18 months is going to be really important. So um, I, I appreciate you going through the effort to do that. Um, the, the question I had was um, around the, the service plan and designing it, um, and maybe you'll, you'll talk about it in a little in a few slides later on, but just, just help me understand. So we're looking at an internal piece um, kind of process first and and, and you know, here, here comes my standard monthly question around the, the external engagement piece. Like, how, how does that, um, how does that roll into this, um, into this um, discussion here that we've got um, that you've got on the board here? 
So um, probably the, the best way for me to start characterizing this is that our starting point, and I think we do have in, I think Haley, you've got a copy of the exhibit from the June 2020 uh, business case, the addendum to the business case, the map. Uh, um, to, to present on the screen? Yeah, is it possible to bring that up? Uh, is that uh, the conceptual design of the routing? Yes, from the June, I think, I believe it was called figure one. Yes, I can. If you, if you just give me 30 seconds, I can go and grab it off the website and pull it up. Sure. So what I'll, I'll, I'll start speaking Haley, to it. Sorry, um, sorry, Haley, it's actually just further in the, the back of the deck in case we needed to bring it forward. Oh, my apologies. Okay. Uh, I will stop presenting and then present it from the deck. Okay. Um, so while while uh, Haley's digging that up, um, many of you, I'm sure, will remember this map. So this was the map of the regional network that was modified at the time of the, uh, the, the identification of the municipalities that were continuing as members of the commission or were, were engaging as members of the commission. And there it is there. Um, this was really the basis on which the eight municipalities represented by all the members of the board bought into the idea of the EMTFC. Um, so this was the conceptual transit service design as it relates to the regional or intermunicipal routes. What we're starting with, Councillor Munkoff Swain, is this diagram. So we are conscious of the fact, though, that this was developed when ridership looked very different across the, uh, the region. And so we're going to be taking a look at the service levels and the ridership that exists today. And, and you know, the city of Beaumont is a prime example of that, that orange line kind of in the southeast quadrant of this map that I said orange, sorry, purple line that goes up from Beaumont. It's my understanding that that service right now, there's no service running between Beaumont and Edmonton. And we're going to have to take a look at what are the reasonable expectations for September of 2022 in terms of the need for all of these, these regional connections on opening day, recognizing that in the fullness of time, and we all fully anticipate that these are the routes that will be required. Um, these, these will be the conceptual network that we're all working to in the longer, with, with, the, with a longer term objective, whether that's 2023 or 2024. But on opening day, what elements of these will be in place or should be in place? And more importantly, what levels of service will be appropriate on these particular routes? That's not to, uh, or I should differentiate from the local services that will also be considered in those municipalities outside of Edmonton. So a second piece of, of work will be around those lo local services that continue to be delivered in the municipalities that, uh, that have service outside of Edmonton, that will also be considered. The engagement that I spoke about was sitting down with the transit uh, people in each one of the municipalities to identify those current service levels and what the service levels by conceptually could look like by September of 2022. The engagement is a staff engagement at this point, um, and it's to focus on or to develop this conceptual transit service design, but instead of saying June of 2020, it would say September of 2022. This is the work that would form the basis of that financial, uh, financial analysis and the budget that we bring forward with the detailed service planning then to follow in early 2022. So looking at taking this, once it's approved by this board, once it's approved by the commission, once the budget has been set for 2022, there would be a second round of engagement where, where the, it, it would be more, more wholesome, more robust. Uh, it would likely involve some community engagement as well uh, and would uh, add on to or, or supplement the transit 
person or transit expert engagement that we will engage in at this point in time. At this point in time, with regards to the, the work to be carried out over the next two months, we have not worked in a public engagement component to that. Uh, we're, we're focused more on, on looking at what the current service levels are like and how might they affect our, our plan for 22. Okay. If I follow up, you follow up if that's okay, Chair. Yeah, and, and so basically, if I, if I was to summarize, <clears throat> we would we were initially planning towards you know Q3, Q4 to do that public engagement based on this map. Um, but but what you're what you're sharing is that you know based on the pandemic, we, we need to revise and make sure we've got this piece right first before we go out to public engagement. And so essentially, we're pushing that to, to Q1, Q2 next year. And, and and I'm good with that. That makes sense. I just wanted to make sure we're still in alignment there. The, the, the second question that I had, um, a, a very brief one, but uh, an, an important one, um, you've got those, those, some of those key meeting dates um, for September, it looks like you're, you're potentially adding a second. Um, I think for, for a discussion like this, um, you know, I, I, the more we could be in person and, and however we can manage that, I think would be would be important for us to really grasp behind all of this. It's uh, obviously we're, we're using technology here. We can get away with it and, and it's OK. But when we're getting into those nitty gritty details, um, nothing better than sitting around a boardroom. So uh, obviously, if we can do that safely and um, I think, um, you know, I think I would highly recommend that that the board consider looking at some of those things in person. That, that may be a discussion for later on. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there. You, you answered my question, so I appreciate it. Couldn't agree with you more on that last statement, Sam. Well, well stated. Over to you, Don Gord. Um, looking at this plan, I think it's prudent and it's strategic uh, to move to a discussion as to what we might consider transit use to look like in the future, given a kind of a, a comeback from the, you know, the impact of the pandemic. I think our municipality would expect that uh, that discussion is just uh, strategic and it's prudent. Uh, nobody has a crystal ball, uh, but uh, I firmly believe that if we look at the right conditions in our economy, uh, provincially, nationally, and regionally, we will see a return to reasonable transit uh, ridership over time. Uh, that may take a while, but I believe that uh, you know as we return to normalcy, those conditions will be met and it's prudent to at least uh, have, 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 have done some educated prognostication as to what that's looking like. And ultimately this plan that's on the screen today um, will, will ultimately, I think, have more prudence for all of the members. Uh, I know our community in Fort Saskatchewan would, would want to have that opportunity to feed into that process now. And so I, I think it's very prudent and I, I congratulate the administration for bringing it forward and suggesting that those are some of the preconditions to move forward to a, a better overall plan. So I, I, I wholly support it and I believe it's prudent and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Finstead. Thank you. Uh, Paul, I just wanted to, to uh affirm what others before me have said, that public transit going forward is gonna be different. We know that for a fact. We know that there's gonna be an in increased emphasis on work from home, which will basically mean that people may not be going into the office, public transit or otherwise. And the entire uh, potential rush hour type scenarios, morning and afternoon is likely gonna change as well. So. I really think it was prudent on your part to uh, spearhead this this drive to look at what's what's happening today, what's potentially going to happen in the future, and not rely on even though it was a very valuable report that we received uh, from E and Y a year or so ago. That it's really prudent that we we take a relook at this based on the new realities and. Uh, Again, the budget's gonna be completely different based on what we come up with in, in your uh, analysis going forward. And that's a good thing. Uh, but I just wanted to say, hey, I, I fully support the uh, the path you're taking. And uh, I really look forward to a comparator between the, uh, the new plan and the new budget versus the other one to see uh, what the impact the uh, pandemic really had on uh, 
what our expectations are and were. Thank you. Fair enough. Yep. Thank you, Paul. Over to you. Okay, so perhaps if we can uh, come back to the presentation, Haley, to the facilitation deck, moving from the timeline then uh, to the discussion of the things that we need to carry out this work. Um, and I, I'm not sure if, uh, okay, perfect. Um, so the, in order to carry out this work, and it is a very aggressive timeline, and uh, I know that in terms of the, the discussions with the municipal staff, the municipal staff have said that they are they're committed to helping, but they're also quite conscious of the fact that they are, <laughs> they've got all kinds of other work that is on their, their table as well. Um, and if I can uh, just sort of commend the staff for the, uh, the participation that they've had in the past and uh, uh, implore on you to uh, keep working with that municipal staff to make sure that uh, they contribute to the, the work over the course of the next two months, that would be great. Um, in order to carry out the work, we also need the, uh, to, to refresh some of the, uh, the current service providers or past service providers that uh, were involved in this work. We really need two broad areas of expertise to help out in this regard. The first is the transit service planning uh, services that we, we know. And uh, in the past, um, in, in the original work, there were uh, planning service planning consultants that were sub-consultants to EY. Uh, our Andrew Anderson was kind of the prime lead on that. Um, I've had discussions with Andrew about his ability to uh, take up the work that was uh, carried out back in 2019 and 2020, and uh, his ability to work with us to refresh that work, uh, work with the eight municipalities to refresh that work, and then to provide a basis for the financial reanalysis or, or review of the original financial business case. Um, so those are two broad components of the work that need to be carried out over the next two months, two to three months, in order to get us to a point where we can bring forward those key milestone uh, deliverables to the board in September and in October. So moving forward, jumping to the next slide then, um, what, uh, what I would ask is at this point is uh, if, if there are no further questions uh, that uh, the board and perhaps I'll turn it over to, to Chair Broadhead for this. Um, our, our suggestion was that the, uh, the information presented over the last number of slides uh, be accepted for information purposes before we move on to the other uh, motions. Fair enough, uh, Paul, I appreciate that. So uh, before we entertain this motion, and I see your hand there, Glenn, uh, um, any questions before we move on? We see none, uh, Councillor Finstad, if you'd like to make the motion. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the uh, board accept as information, the material and discussion as presented during the CEO update. All right, uh, accept that motion. Any comments before I call the question? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? And uh, Councillor Walters, sorry, I don't see your hand. And that's passed unanimously. Thank you very much. I recognize that there is going to be work uh, coming out of this. So uh, back to you. Uh, Mr. Jankowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So in your package that you uh, received an update to this morning, you will see three uh, sort of quick uh, requests for decision and they relate to uh, the ability of, uh, or the, the, the need to actually retain some consultants to carry out not only the financial and the, uh, the, the uh, transit service planning work that I've spoken to over the course of the last few minutes, but also to the, uh, the need for us to uh, extend some of the current uh, agreements with service providers uh, in order to carry out or to help uh, provide the administrative services 
to allow the business of this commission to proceed for the next few months, as well as the human resources services. Uh, and maybe I'll speak to them as the, uh, the following motions are brought forward. Um, but we recommend, or it's my recommendation, that we extend the contract to uh, EY, Ernst & Young, well as to continue to support the board over the course of the next two months and support the commission over the course of the next uh, two, two and a half months, I guess it is, to the end of August. Um, so there are two separate components to the work. One is the support from an administrative standpoint, which would end August 2021. Uh, and the second is the, the financial analysis that I spoke to. Uh, the second is to uh, uh, issue a new contract. And uh, given the past involvement from a financial and a timeline perspective, the only way we're going to be able to carry out that transit planning services work uh, is with the assistance of Andrew Anderson Business Consulting. Uh, I've had an ability to sit down and to discuss that with uh, Andrew Anderson, as I indicated before, uh, and we have uh, come up with a reasonable price for carrying out that work based on essentially the same fee structure that was uh, in place during the earlier work. But I should point out, given that we're going to be, uh, if with the board's approval, if the board approves this, this assignment, what we will be doing is we'll be uh, engaging Andrew Anderson Business Consulting directly, uh, as opposed to them being a sub-consultant through EY. And there will be cost savings overall uh, associated with that direct retention and direct hiring of those services. Lastly, the firm of Sixth Sense has been providing great support to me and to the board in terms of all of the HR policy development work. Uh, the board's approved a number of key policies at a board level and there are administrative policies that continue to be developed, uh, as well as the, uh, the they, they've also been supporting me in uh, terms of uh, bringing on board the key staff members, the key leadership uh, component, the key leadership people that we will be putting in place for the remainder of this year. Under the original budget that the board approved for 2021, it was envisioned that we would hire a number of positions, including a manager of human resources uh, by mid-year of this year. That work I'm deferring, I'm suggesting that we defer that work uh, until later this year, particularly with regards to hiring the positions beyond the CFO and beyond a chief transit operating official. Uh, and in doing so, we will actually be, uh, um, we won't be using the full allocation of budget that was originally approved for those, those, uh, uh, those particular hires. Um, that then allows us to use some of that uh, board approved budget to uh, engage the service providers as recommended in the next number of motions uh, and leave the, uh, the overall 2021 budget as a whole. So we're not requesting any kind of budget amendment. We do have the budget under the overall approved budget to engage uh, Andrew uh, or engage Anderson Business Consulting as a new engagement and to extend the contracts of EY and Sixth Sense. Though that's broadly speaking, the information that's included in your decision requests. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'll, I will turn it back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jankowski. Any questions of board members? I, I do know that uh, we all received the uh, request for decisions uh, for the, the three um, uh, decisions that we're gonna be making this afternoon. Um, did everybody get a chance to take a look at them? Uh, Councillor Harris, over to you. Uh, you know, on balance, I think these are reasonable recommendations. If it stays within budget and allows us to uh, support the work of our administration or CEO, then I think it's prudent and it's uh, reasonable on that basis. So I, I think it's it's good to know. Okay, thank you, Councillor Laurie. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, and as the uh, the chair of the uh, Oh my goodness, I can't even remember the name of the subcommittee right now. It's escaping me. <laughs> audit and finance. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's the audit and finance committee. Uh, 
CEO Jankowski did contact me to discuss the the uh, potential of this coming forward, and I did actually have those same comments that the that uh, Mr. Harris had uh, in regards to as long as it fit within the originally uh, approved budget, and as long as there weren't any significant changes or sways in that, uh, I didn't feel that there would be any detrimental considerations from that end. And so I was supportive of it when Mr. Jankowski contacted me and we discussed it in the first part, and I would continue to support it now at the presentation at the board level. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Lori. Uh, Mayor Ralph, over to you. Yeah, I had a chance to uh, review these as well. And, uh, you know, with no real impact on the budget, et cetera, I think, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Jankowski has had an opportunity to look at what he needs and look what he's got right now. So I, I fully support, uh, you know, the direction or the request by, by him to uh, move things forward uh, in this direction. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mayor Ralph. Any, any further questions? I do know that we have uh, uh, budget uh, motions attached to each of these uh, sort of proposals. And uh, I'll ask uh, council members to, or council committee, commission, board members. We're all used to being in council, so it kind of rolls off the tongue real easy. But uh, in any case, uh, if members of the board would be willing to make the motion, Sarah, uh, um, I guess if we could go to the first motion, I uh, just, I, I got to tell you when I saw this, uh, just normally we, we see some of the, uh, the grounds uh, included in the motion. Uh, we, we see them as sort of preamble as, as uh, whereas is. However, um, and perhaps uh, Mr. Shores, if you'd like to speak to why you've crafted the motions the way they are, in relation to uh, the strength that these motions bring to the business nature of our commission here. Yes, so these are um, essentially either continuations by way of um, a sole contract or in the case of Anderson, a sole contract. So we needed to ensure that the approach we took was consistent with new EPTA, the new West partnership trade agreement and your procurement policy and for that reason, we've built the ground specifically into the motion so that when you adopt them, they are, for, they are evidently compliant uh, with those obligations. So that's, that's the point of uh, containing the grounds uh, inside the motion themselves rather than being treated as a preamble. Thank you very much, Mr. Shores. I gotta tell you, I, life is a learning situation as we go on and and this was a learning for me so it may not have been for the rest of the board but it was for me so thank you for sharing that with uh, us uh, Mr. Shores uh, so we have uh, motion number one before us uh, someone care to read this motion into the record Councillor Laurie thank you Mr. Chair and uh, would you like me to read the entire motion or just move the motion as presented on the screen uh well, our, our procedure is to read the entire motion. All right. I know it's, uh, <laughs> All right, thank you. I will move that the EMTSC approve the retention of Anderson Business Consulting at a cost not to exceed $96,600, excluding GST on the grounds that Anderson Business Consulting, originally under some contract to EY, provided transit service planning services during the business case development work leading to the establishment of the EMTSC. The EMT, EMTSC requires transit service planning services to update the original business case transit planning and financial framework and to develop the conceptual 2022 service plan and draft 2022 operating budget and multi-year outlook by early fall 2021. And Anderson Business Consulting has a unique and foundational base of knowledge that cannot be replicated by another consultant within the timeline required to complete the transit service planning work. And finally, the transit service planning the transit service planning services do not, by their nature, lend themselves to a public procurement process because a public procurement process for this work would delay and impede the effective preparation of the updated EMTSC business case and 2022 transit service planning, financial planning, and budget preparations, and in the result, cause significant inconvenience and substantial duplication of costs for the EMTSC. Thank you very much, Councillor Lori. Um, accept that motion. Any opening comments? 
Not too much to add, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Just again, completely supportive of uh, CEO Jankowski's uh, bringing these forward. Obviously, he's had, uh, as he said at the beginning of this meeting, a month to get his feet wet and understand the complexities that he's going to be dealing with moving forward. And uh, I'm actually quite happy to see that he's already at this point in planning how he needs to best move forward with his future activities and being prepared for the challenges he will face with redoing the business case. So very happy to see this forward here already today and not coming another month from now in our next meeting. And I think having this in place will only allow us to move forward with the efficiency of getting the new business case developed. Thank you very much. On debate, any other member of uh, the board want to weigh in? Seeing none, let me call the question then. All in favor, please raise the hand. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. So for motion two, I have Councillor Harris and for motion three, I have uh, Mayor Ray Ralph. Uh, Motion two, over to on you. The, uh, second, on the second motion, I would move that EMTSC extend the agreement dated February 19th, 2021 between EMTSC and Ernst & Young LLP EY for a period to expire no later than December, 2021 at a cost not to exceed an additional $46,800 excluding GST on the grounds of that. EY provided consulting services respecting the design of planning for an establishment of the MTSC and it provided interim project administrative support under the MTSC slash EY agreement. And EMTSC requires continued interim project support, administrative function support, including support in relation to updating the MTSC business case, financial planning, and 2022 budget and multi-year outlook preparations. The combined the continued project services. And EY has a unique and foundational case of knowledge that cannot be replicated by another consultant within the timeline required to provide the continued project services. And finally, the continued project services do not, by their nature, lend themselves to a public procurement process because a public procurement process for this brief extension of interim project and administrative support services would delay and impede the effective preparation of the updated EMTSC business case, financial planning, and budget preparations, and in the result, cause significant inconvenience and substantial application of costs for the EMTSC. Thank you very much, Councillor Harris. I accept that motion uh, on opening. Any comments? Um, I think it's self-explanatory. I think it was well-crafted by Mr. Shores uh, and our staff to ultimately demonstrate that uh, we do have uh, appropriate services that can be gathered in a, in a cost-effective and efficient manner to help the board and our administration move forward in an appropriate and timely manner. So I just think it's prudent and business-like. And I support Thank you very it. Much. So uh, any other board member choosing to weigh in on debate? Seeing none, I'll call the question then. All in favor, please raise the hand. Uh, Councillor McKenzie, I'm just waiting to see yours. There you are. And that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Councillor Harris, a motion number three, over to you, Mayor Ralph. I think, think I'd be used to unmuting myself before I go to talk. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, it's all good. That the EMTSC extend the agreement uh, dated March 15, 2021, between EMTSC and the Sixth Sense HR resources to December 31st, 2021 at a cost not to exceed an additional 91,200, excluding GST, on the grounds that six cents HR resources provide human resources consulting services during the stand-up phase immediately following the establishment of the EMTSC. EMTSC requires continued interim human resources consulting services, the continued HR services, as it moves towards an operational state in which it will employ staff to meet its human resources management needs. Sixth Sense HR resources have a unique and foundational base of knowledge that cannot be re replicated by another consulting consultant 
within the timeline required to provide the continued HR services. The continued HR services do not, by their nature, lend themselves to a public procurement process because of the public procurement process of this for this brief extension of human resources consulting services would delay and impede the effective establishment and implementation of a staffing model for the EMPSC and, in the result, cause significant inconvenience and substantial duplication of costs for the EMTSC. Thank you very much, Mayor Ralph. Uh, certainly accept that motion. Anything on opening? I uh, just, I fully support this. Uh, again, it's just uh, moving things direct uh, forward in, a, in an appropriate manner. So thank you. Thank you very much. Any other board member choosing to weigh in on debate? Seeing none, let me call the question. All in yeah, favor, not, please raise uh, Actually, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, but um, my uh, Councillor Walters did have his hand up. Oh, I'm. I, no. my apologies. That's, uh, I was still voting on the last thing, allegedly. So that was a <laughs> legacy hand. Apologize. A legacy Mr. hand. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> Let's bring up a let let me recall the question. Everybody raise the, the hand in favor of this motion. And that's passed unanimously. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> and motion number four uh, from earlier in the uh, from earlier in the meeting. It will just take a. Uh, it just will take a moment to get that up on the screen. So it's been it's been crafted. Okay. It just has to be inserted into the uh, presentation. It's no problem. Councillor Walters, I'll ask for you to move your own motion if that's all right. Yeah. Can I move yes, there, there's two procedural elements. The first is we need a motion to actually add it to the agenda, which is the one that's up on the screen now. And then okay. when that passes, then we can do the actual motion uh, that was discussed earlier. I'll move that the board add the following motion to the agenda, letter to the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board regarding the integrated regional ma transportation master plan and the role of the commission. Okay. Um, it's a procedural question. Is this a debatable uh, motion? I suspect it would be, eh? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, you're correct. It is a debatable motion. Um, uh, and so if there's any debate, you should oh, permit it. Thank you very much, Mr. Shores. Uh, thanks. I'll certainly accept this motion. Um, Councillor Walters, any uh, comment on opening? I hope there's no debate. Fair enough. Any other member of uh, the board choosing to weigh in? Seeing not, we'll call uh, the question. All in favor, please raise the hand. And that passed unanimously. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Now to the main motion, Councilor Walters. I'll move that the uh, EMTSC send a letter to the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board reflecting their interest in participating in future discussions related to the integrated regional transportation master plan. The regional transit be given high priority in those discussions and future iterations of the plan, recognizing the importance, tra importance transit plays within the region, the work that has taken place to date, and that will be undertaken in the future by MTSC. Thank you very much. Uh, accept that motion. Any opening comments then, uh, Councillor Walters? Yeah, just very briefly, as, as per my comments earlier, I think that, um, uh, and I think uh, Mayor Ralph had suggested and, and others had suggested, uh, and I observed uh, that there could be more emphasis on, on transit in that, in that plan. And, and I do appreciate Councillor Lurie's submission earlier too, that there's, there's some reason uh, and openness uh, that was left in uh, the plan uh, for us to do our work, but it doesn't hurt us to just sort of firmly stake our claim. So simple, straightforward, I would think. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Walters. Uh, any uh, board member wishing to weigh in on debate? Councillor Monkoff swain Okay. Uh, Councillor Lolori. You Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
just because time is of the essence on this, because the IRTMP is so close to being put to the EMRB for final approval, I'm wondering if we should be a little bit more specific and potentially ask that the CEO and or potentially the board chair um, be allowed to attend the next IRTMP task force meeting. Uh, to answer any questions and provide any further information to ensure that our interests are best represented in the IRTMP. Are you suggesting that be included in the letter, Councillor Laura, or do you want that added to the motion? Um, I'm thinking just in the letter would be suitable. I don't know if we need to put it in the motion unless anybody else feels strongly that we need to put it in there. But again, just recognizing time is of the essence. This likely will be the last IRTMP task force meeting before the report goes to the board for final approval. So it would be uh, quite a miss if it was just taken as you know, want to be involved in future discussions and the opportunity to have those discussions before the final report is presented was not obtained. Thank you very much. Councillor Finstad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my question would be, in addition to sending the letter to the IRTMP, would it be prudent to send it to all uh, members of the EMRB, since not all members of the EM EMRB are party to the IRTMP uh, committee. My rationale for that is just making sure that it uh, gets the recognition it duly deserves, in my opinion. If that's a question to the mover, it is directed to send it to the, bo to the board, the way it's written, so everybody would get it. Fair enough. Thanks for that clarity. Um, Okay, with the understanding that in the letter would be a request that uh, I'm going to suggest that the CEO, uh, Mr. Jankowski, uh, be invited to the next IRTMP meeting to answer any questions on behalf of the committee uh, in relation to the role of the commission as it plays out in terms of the regional master plan. Uh, Mayor Ralph. I just want to uh, just kind of add to that, that uh, it might be wise, uh, beneficial for the CAO to contact Karen to make sure it's on their agenda before the next agenda comes out because some there they could be working on that agenda currently. So just want to be ahead of the game. Thanks. Okay. So the time is of the essence of getting this letter out to be sure. Uh, all right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Walters. On debate, open. Nothing further. Okay, any other member of the board choosing to weigh in? Councillor Ralph, or Mayor Ralph, sorry. Sorry, I just wanted to put up my hand to see what Councillor Walters would say, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so seeing no other we choose to weigh in on debate, I'll call the question then on motion number five. All in favor, please raise your hand. And uh, that is passed unanimously. Thank you very much. And uh, good call on that. So before we uh, move to the next item on the agenda, which is this one, <laughs> and I'd like to congratulate the board and the CEO on the efficiency of running today's meeting. I know time is of the essence for all of us. So any other comments before uh, I call for an adjournment? All righty. Mayor Ralph. Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to get an update on the it, we're going to receive a, um, a statement of what we're like for meetings um, to where like so that we could review them uh, once we got the financially financials in place and we still haven't seen anything that so because I like some of us need to do some uh, do some adjustments with our councils or with our with our municipalities um, so I'd like to know when that's going to possibly come back. 
Mr. Jankowski. So sorry, I'm not sure I, I understand the uh, the request. Is it a, a schedule of meetings that you're the, looking the, for? The remuneration for the previous meeting since the oh. since the establishment of the of the uh, commission, because once the establishment of the commission was put in place, then the compensation rolled into them. But um, again, I haven't really been tracking them myself personally, so I'd just like to get an idea of you know, what, what is, what is being covered and what isn't. So, so if, I, I, if I may, I, I could step, I could take accountability. I, I'm happy to take accountability for the fact that you don't have them. Uh, I believe they have been prepared and it was something that I did not, uh, I, I neglected to get finished off. So I will turn my attention back to that with, uh, with Paul and with finance to make sure we get taken care of. And so Paul, we can, we can touch base after that was something that was carried forward from my responsibility. Thank you. Imminent, Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, it will be imminent. No, again, I just, I, I know that uh, for myself, there was, uh, because there was a crossover and everything else and confusion. So I just want to get it straightened out with my, with my uh, municipality. So thank you. Yeah, no, it's a fair question. I think it's uh, on all of our minds. And, uh, and the, the interesting thing that uh, happened this last week was the, the whole ability to pay <laughs> and uh, uh, when I had my conversation with Mr. Jankowski this morning I said to him if you finally got paid <laughs> and uh, he, he, he told me he would check his bank account to see if there was any money in there so I appreciate your patience Mr. Jankowski as well as all of the rest of the creditors uh, that have done work for us, uh, understanding that uh, the funds will eventually arrive in their account. And, and uh, so thank you to everybody on, on uh, this call. Thank you. Anything further then? Well, happy Thursday afternoon then. Uh, I'll uh, name this uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you everybody. Thank I you. know.